They must be a more equal. Wealth must be spread more equally. And then it would do away with some of the major causes of war and unrest. Now I put them in my mind. And now we see the result. And Oh dear, dear, oh dear me, look at that. Oh dear, 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 look at that. Mm. I suppose, mind you, this is how the world is today. You've got, you've got, you've got those who've got a lot of money and then the lots of great countries like and they seem to go. And then you've got the developing countries. And some call it the third world. Third world. <laughs> this is the third world. These are the top dogs, they say. We're the top dogs. We don't want to know nothing about third world. We're sending them a bit of money. We got plenty. The middle lot there, well, they're the middle lot are not so well off now, and nor are this lot. It doesn't seem to be. Things seem to get bad. But how uh, um, dare I say the three worlds? You know, when the astronauts went up in there, and they looked down, there was only one world. I didn't see three worlds, and they didn't from the spaceship. No, these people are stupid. And we'll see what we can do. And the, this is from Bahá'u'lláh Unity Unity. And Bahá'u'lláh has come to unite all mankind, and to unite the world. And now, Baha'u'llah said, the world is but one country, and mankind its citizen. And that is how we must look at it. Now we come into the end, and I would like to close, I'd like to close, by painting you a picture. And here my palette, but unfortunately, it's not very good at the moment, it's only got white paint. I can paint a snowman in a snowstorm, a polar bear in a snowstorm, and even a snowstorm on its own. But no. Let's see what we can do by magic. With this little box. Over to one. And there's silk to represent the paint, and we push it through the bottom right now. Right now. And now we find it come out blue. Maybe one of the harder teachings, blue. The independent investigation of the truth. You should see with your own eyes and hear with your own ears and not through the eyes and ears of other people. We take it all and we place it in the box. Again, put it in. A little magic pack in the tab, and there we find lilac. Lilac. Service for mankind. Another one of it, oh, the teeth. And also, the science and religion must go together. The harmony of science and religion. And of course, we have the box again. And the box is completely empty. And you can see completely empty. And we take this and we put it in the box. Just like that. And then all my find Right. The fire of the Hala teachings is most holy book, the Katabi Agar, which is great. As the blood, the light blood of the heart of the new world order, the laws, and also the blood of the masters, which said in the cause.
And again, we open the box. We take it up. We put that in the box like that. And again, pink. No one behind teaches. Love and unity, understanding, kindness, moderation. My father teaches moderation, he said, moderation in all things. And of course, we take the last one and place it in the box. Just like that. Like that. Aha. Purple. Spirituality, all the good things of mankind, all the noble things of mankind, just as unity, love, and harmony. And peace. And cause the box. And then the Bahar will ask that the Song of Bahala will ask why are the different coloured people in the world? And then the Bahar said, well, just remember the artist's palette, if it were all one colour, I mean, you couldn't paint any pictures. And if you did, it would be monotonous. And then likewise, we've got all the different colours of people in the world. And this it's why. Just like the flowers of the garden, if they were all one colour, they are monotony, but all the different harmony in colour. And Bahala says, Plant naught in the garden of thy heart, but the roses of love. And wherever you go, take a rose of love with you, and bring unity and peace to all mankind. This video is dedicated to the late Mr. John Long, who has given me advice, encouragement and help in making it.
away the friends. I did bring reading a, a book called The High Bible Proofs. Right, Bible Proofs. Um, after I became a Baha'i, I become, I begun to read books and that, and I begun to see that there was proofs in the Bible. Though I hadn't become a Baha'i for any proofs in the Bible, but I begun to read about these proofs. I read that Jesus said that he would, the time and end would come when the gospel had been talked all over the world. And I found it in 1844, the gospel had been taught all over the world in all countries. Again, Christ said, the time of the end would come when the Jews would turn back to Jerusalem. And I found in 1844, uh, the British force, the, uh, the opening empire without the sort of the other European country, to allow the Jews back into the city of Jerusalem. So 1844 seemed to be the time. I then discovered that you could work the date out from Revelations. And then I found out it was also the date was there in the book of Daniel. And the Christians had worked this out. And that the Christians that I, though I was brought up in the Church of England, I was never told these things. And it was in 1844 that uh, a lot of Christians were waiting for the return, the day of the end, the coming of the Messiah, to bring this golden age. And they think, and then they, it was a great disappointment because they did not know what they were looking for. And I found other religions were talking about 1844 and would be the time of the end, the great age, a new age was time. The end of the Adamic age and the beginning of the new age. And in some of our books it said the age of Baha'u'llah. Because Baha'u'llah is an Arabic word. And in the book of the Parsis, which or the Zoroastrian, these are the same, it said there is some prophecies, and one of the prophecies says, and I repeat it, in 1844, in the city of Shiraz, a young man will appear, and he will bring a new religion, and he will be known with the barb, a herald, he will herald the Messiah. And the religion will start and then the Messiah will come. And then the son of the Messiah will take over this religion. And they will interpret it and, and form it and build it. And then the house of the Messiah and the house of the barb will be united into one more man. And this man would build a new administration that had been laid down by Baha'u'llah and his son. And, well, this was amazing. <laughs> All these, between the time of Christ, about 3,000 years or more ago, this was written. And then I looked and realized how the Baha'i faith started. Well, let me show you with some magic. Out of the Baha'i faith did start. Well, the Baha'i faith, how did it start? I said I'd show you. Well, it was in 1844, in Persia, in the city of Shirah, a young man appeared, known with the barb. And he held the one to uh, God would make manifest. He had the coming of the Messiah. But he also brought the religion itself. And then they shot him and murdered him and killed all his followers. And then the Messiah from the deep dark pit, from the deep dark dungeon, a rich nobleman with Baha'u'llah, and he was sacrificed all his wealth and that to teach love and unity to mankind. The Messiah had come. And then when the Messiah died, his son, Al-Bahar, 
took over the Baha'i faith and he looked after the Baha'is and he gave them the covenant whereby the Baha'i faith could not be split into different groups. There would only be one Baha'i faith, there could not be two. And then, after him, the house of Baha'u'llah and the Baha'u were united into a fourth man. And this fourth man built administration, built the administration that Baha'u'llah set up and brought into being the administration. Why do we need a new administration, you say? Why? What's wrong with the old? Well, there have been feudalism, it gone. There have been many different forms of government gone. We see communists breaking up. We hear a lot about the democracy. Democracy! Huh. Is that so great thing? Is that so a great thing? I ask you. Well, let's have a look at it. Let's see if it is such a great thing. Well, in a democracy, you've got a party in power and an opposition. And the opposition go against the party in power. Then you've got this unity. And what the world needs today is unity, not disunity. And you've got all this fiction and that and bickering. You see it and on TV and on the air, it's on the right, this, this bickering one another. Well, then another way to look at democracy is in a democracy, a majority, the majority is always right, and they are right, and nobody else is. But we know this is not true. For many, some hundreds of years ago, a doctor, his patients were dying and he looked, shook hands one day with a friend and he realised there was something on his hands. We know that this is germs and he went about telling the other doctors they must wash their hands when they handled patients and, and when they did operations and they laughed at him and said, ha 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 ha, you idiot, don't think we're going to take notice of you, you fool. Today we know that they are germs and we must wash our hands when we handle food and especially when we 